Amen. Genesis chapter 3, go way back in your Bibles to almost the beginning. As we begin a series on truth, the Bible says so much about truth and we should not be surprised by that because it is all true and that's the only source of truth. To find out what is true, you have to go to your Bible. And if you don't honor your Bible, you will be delayed in understanding the truth, maybe forever. That's one of the dangers of not taking God's Word seriously. Truth or consequences. Your sermon notes are on the back of your bulletin. And we want to talk about truth. Taking God at His Word. Taking God at His Word. We could say with all clarity and conviction today that the fall of the human race occurred because there was a lack of respect and a lack of honor and a lack, lack of adherence to God's revealed truth. God revealed something that was true and Adam and Eve simply didn't believe it. They didn't take Him at His word. And today the same dilemma exists. We may not be able to cause the fall of the human race like Adam did by his disregard of the truth, but I can tell you something folks that ought to get your attention. You can perpetuate your own fall you can perpetuate your own personal fall if you disregard the truth that God has revealed in His Word. Truth that He has given as a gift to mankind. It's a gift for us. Truth is light. <coughs> truth is direction. It's guidance. Truth is powerful. Truth is connected to something beyond what is cold and calloused. Truth is connected in the Bible to love. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, love rejoices with the truth. Ephesians 4.15 says something that all of us should remember, and that is we are to speak the truth in love. So love is not separated, truth is not separated from other virtues. It must be combined. There are two paths in life, two worldviews, a world of truth and a world of lies. There is a truth teller and there is a liar. That is a strong word. That is a very strong word, but the Bible uses it over and over again in the Old and especially in the New Testament as our adversary continues to prowl around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Adam may have been his first victim, but Adam was not his last. And any theology that says that Satan is bound now is a faulty theology. Jesus is even called in the Bible the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible is called truth. In John 17:17, 17, 17, it doesn't just say that the Bible is true. It says that the Bible is truth. The Christian worldview is simple. God is the author of all things that are true and therefore decides what is true. And as a result of the fall, not only of Adam and Eve, but of the great, beautiful angel who has fallen, that fallen angel now seeks to pervert and twist the truth at every opportunity. And from Genesis 3 on, we see the enemy bringing to humanity half-truths. We are to, and I love this, I don't know who came up with this, but it's genius. Genius when you go to the courtroom, and even though some people probably put their hand on the Bible and say it and don't mean it, it's still genius. I promise to tell the truth. The whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That, that's, that's somebody who knows God and somebody who knows man. You give man an inch, he'll wiggle out of it. Is this the whole truth? Is this nothing but the truth? Half lies. Where did this come from? The phrase, it's a little white lie. <laughs> lies aren't white in the Bible. They're black. We have to be careful what we dismiss. This is not complicated, but it's heavy in its consequences. Truth or consequences. So much for us to learn in Genesis 3. So much application for us today beyond the fall of 
our father, our first father and mother, Adam and Eve. Truth will bring us great blessing from God and straying from the truth will bring us great consequences. One last point of introduction from his book, Battle for the Beginning. John MacArthur writes, Genesis 3 is one of the most vitally important chapters in all the Bible. It is the foundation of everything that comes after it. Without it, little else in Scripture or in life itself would make sense. Genesis 3 explains the condition of the universe and the state of humanity. It explains why the world has so many problems. It explains the human dilemma. It explains why we need a Savior, because it explains that we're sinners. Evolution, he says, offers no explanation for the human dilemma, much less any solution to it. Instead of teaching that man began at the bottom of the moral ladder and slowly rose higher and higher by social and psychological evolution, Genesis 3 teaches the very opposite. Man began at the pinnacle of the created order and through a blatant disregard of God's truth, man has fallen to a level of disgraceful and moral decline. How disgraceful is it when you get to Romans 1 far into the revelation of God? By the way, truth doesn't begin in Genesis 1.1. Time begins in Genesis 1.1. Truth has always been because God has always been. Psalm 90 verse 2 from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Preacher, you got a dilemma. You got to explain to the atheist and the evolutionist where God come from. I don't have any bigger dilemma than they do because they got to tell me where matter came from. Amen. Something's been here forever. Stuff or a sovereign God? Matter or the Master? Something, and we, nobody was there at the beginning. And so what we have to conclude is, are we an accident or are we a plan? Is there order in our universe or is there chaos? And if there is chaos, where did the chaos go? God explains both. Order and chaos. You know what I wanted to I think My mind was just all over. This week's been everywhere. And I thought to myself, I wish I could, to, could just uh, come out in a pair of shorts and, and a shirt. Now, I'm never going to do this. Don't panic. <laughs> but I wanted to just come out in shorts and a shirt and then just throw, up, just throw a suit up in the air. And then step out behind the thing and over here, it all, and I'd say, it all landed on me just perfectly. <laughs> the button's buttoned. The t-shirt got tucked in. Socks aren't crinkled. The tie is straight. I got a better chance of doing that than evolution has a chance of being true. Amen. Just throwing my clothes up in the air and just hoping it all lands on me. It's ridiculous, folks. And if you don't believe the Bible, you are going to delay, delay truth. Let me tell you a fellow who delayed truth. Herbert Spencer delayed truth. Herbert Spencer won a Nobel Peace Prize in the early 1900s for his work in classification. And Herbert Spencer's, in many ways, much more intelligent than I am. But when you don't know God, a lot of that intelligence only has temporal benefits. Very intelligent man. His work is in classification. He said in the early 1900s, everything that is, it exists in one of five classifications. Time, force, action, space, and matter. You can't discover anything. He's right. He is right. Everything that is, is in one of five classifications. Time, force, action, space, and matter. And they don't... I don't does anybody here have an extra Nobel Peace Prize? Because I'd like one. They don't give those out pretty flippantly, do they? They're pretty... I mean, they honored him with one of the highest honors you can have. But the Bible told us, everything Herbert Spencer told us, in the very first verse of the Bible, in the beginning time, God force created action, the heaven, space, and the earth matter. The very first verse in the Bible exactly told us what it took Herbert Spencer and humanity thousands of years. To. Listen, if you will believe your Bible, it will be like miracle grow in your life. More is going to make sense. You'll have clearer direction, clearer understanding about everything. 
And there are Christians today who aren't sure if the Bible's true, and you have to settle that. If you are going to make a difference, if you are going to make progress, if you are going to be a person of influence, and I'm, I will struggle with you, you can meet me in my office, and if you say, I don't believe it's true, I will put my arm around you. I will not be upset with you. Let me and let others explain to you how we know the Bible is true. Not upset with you.